That's 236-7233. There's a toll-free number, 800-650-6522. You need to talk to somebody. It doesn't, you don't have to give your name. You don't have to identify yourself as anything but a victim. And the advocate that answers the telephone will speak with you and, and offer you those options of other things that you may want to do or may not want to do. But give the hotline a call. I think it's also important for survivors and those who love them and those who want to do something helpful is to realize and say repeatedly that nothing a survivor has done, nothing they have done, warrants them being sexually assaulted. That's it. It doesn't matter what a person's wearing, where they went out, if they were drinking. It doesn't matter if they um, have had sex with somebody before. That doesn't matter. Rape is rape is rape. And it was never their fault. And the more we can get that message out, the more that combats that, um, that issue of not holding perpetrators accountable for their actions. Um. I, I guess I, I would like to direct my comment directly to uh, students here at the university um, to let them know that I am available if they need someone to talk to about these events, if it happens to them. I uh, also direct them to my website, as a student affairs website from the JSU page. I have a link to the sexual misconduct policy on my website. It, it, it goes through the, uh, the, the entire policy. Uh, rights and responsibilities, what I would do in terms of investigation. Uh, I just want students to feel empowered to talk to somebody and to let them know that I'm available if they need me. I want to add on that um, website that Dr. King mentioned that um, there's also, um, I think actually the first page has a list of resources. And um, not only like campus, um, local community, um, but also some national resources. And so I want to also reiterate what um, Brian McVeigh said about, you know, just um, educate if, if you've been a victim um, or you know someone that has been, you know, educate yourself about, you know, what your rights are, you know. Be, be able to make an informed decision about what you want to do about what happened to you. Um, so, you know, just know that those resources are available. District Attorney McVeigh. Yeah, and, and again, I think the most important thing for people who have suffered uh, an assault, a rape, um, is to come forward. I would guard, again, not in any way blaming victims, but I think the advice I would give my own daughter is to be wary of other people, uh, to be careful what you do, uh, don't drink drinks that someone else prepared for you. Uh, there are simple steps that you can take to try to shield yourself. Even with that, there are going to be rapists who get to people and cause harm. And at that point, come forward. But there ought to be an honest discussion uh, with sorority members and, and females, males everywhere uh, to watch out for this sort of behavior. Uh, af over time, I'm sure Jennifer can do it. I'm sure uh, Susan and Trace can do it. You can see these guys. They prey on people. Um, if you watch out for yourself and your friends, you might be able to stop a rape uh, from occurring. So I would say be vigilant as well as come forward and ask for help. And in line with uh, what District Attorney Brian McVeigh has said, I can do a situational awareness presentation for any sororities or fraternities or any group on campus that would like to just call my number at Seven eight two five seven zero nine. I think well, one of the primary takeaways is that you're not alone if you've been uh, a victim or a survivor of sexual assault. Um, these agencies, Second Chance, our office, uh, the police department, the school are all here to help you. Um, they'll go to the rape kit with you. They will come to the uh, district attorney's office with you and help you through that. Um, and the school, of course, has counseling. So I would say utilize that and um, you're not in it alone. Well, I thank you all so much um, for being here. That's all the time that we have for tonight. I want to thank my wonderful panel of guests for uh, discussing this very sensitive but yet most important topic. Uh, Ms. Susan Shipman, who is the Executive Director of the Second Chance Domestic and Sexual Violence Shelter in Aniston. Ms. Trice Fleming-Smith, who is a Sexual Assault Victims Advocate for Second Chance Domestic and Sexual Violence Shelter in Aniston. 
Julie Nix, who is the Director of Counseling Services at Jacksonville State University, Dr. Timothy B. King, who is the Associate Vice President for Enrollment Management and Student Affairs at Jacksonville State University, Sergeant Carl Pruinger, who is the lead investigator for the Jacksonville State University Police Department, Calhoun County District Attorney Brian McVeigh, and Calhoun County Assistant District Attorney Jennifer Gillespie Weems. My name is Ed Moore III, signing out to you live here at the Communications Building on the campus of Jacksonville State University in Jacksonville. Good night.